Hi, I'm Ellen. Welcome to my traveling home, aka my cat sanctuary, aka my karaoke hall, aka my happy place. Welcome to the inside of my 2019 Outdoors RV Creekside 21 RD. RD meaning rear dinette. There used to be a big dinette here right in front of these amazing windows. However, I wanted to use the space differently so I ripped them out. I have this amazing couch from the home reserve that has storage all the way underneath, all the way back that I use and love. I have more stuff under this portion of the couch, but uh, I can't show you that because it would be illegal to move this very adorable cat. I also managed to fit in a cat tree for my cats that fits right between the fridge and the sofa. And then of course, I also have this lovely skylight. On this side of the living room, I have a custom built desk that fits these storage cubes that I had in my old apartment. I have a kneeling chair and my piece de resistance, my wood stove. I had a lot of people tell me how crazy I was to put a wood stove in my camper. Got a lot of questions like, but what about carbon monoxide poisoning? Which guys, there's a flu out the top. I saw the tiny wood stove option when I first began dreaming about this life. I was looking at schoolies. Obviously, I didn't go with the schoolie, but I still really wanted the tiny wood stove. I run cold. I love fireplaces. I had the room for it. The wood stove is sitting on a very solid base. We secured it in multiple ways. I have pieces of wood running this way, basically outlining the top of the box so it helps reduce any wiggle going back and forth. Of course, it does wiggle a little bit but they make them with RVs and buses in mind, so it, it can have movement to it and it does just fine going down the road. I haven't used the stove yet though. It has gotten cold enough to use the stove. However, I am missing one part that has been back ordered out the top and I'm waiting on that to be delivered before I can use the wood stove. So she's got a bright future ahead of her, but not yet. Right inside the door, I have my control panel. I have my control panel for my solar. I've got my awning extend and retract. I've got indoor and outdoor lights. I've got um, my tank measurement. I've got a fresh water tank heater here. What that is, it's a heating pad underneath the fresh water tank. And so if you're driving in freezing cold temperatures, you turn that on when you're driving and it keeps everything not freezing in there. When you are in cold temperatures, as long as you have the furnace on, you don't need to turn this on because the way the outdoors RV builds their RVs, they duct the furnaces underneath the tanks. So when you're running the heat, it's also heating your tanks and keeping that warm. So you don't have to run that all the time. And then I have my Simply Safe system up here. I've got a couple things around a glass break monitor, a temperature sensor. I have a camera that I can't quite get to work. I also have a couple water sensors under a couple of appliances like the water heater. If it were to leak, that water sensor would pick it up before my whole thing, my whole RV gets flooded and I can be notified about it sooner. And yeah, that's my little control panel. It's nice that it's all in one place right here. And then I have these bells that I got on a girl's trip in Ojai, California, which is really fun to be able to take with me. I'm not a cat, I promise. Baby. Welcome to my kitchen. Believe it or not, not the smallest kitchen I've ever had. I think I have more counter space in this kitchen than I did in my last apartment. So very cool. I've got a nice little flip up countertop right here on the end if I want to use it. I've got a double basin sink. I've got amazing storage underneath the sink. And up here is my pantry. I decided to put my food up here rather than my dishes. I can fit more up here. I use bins to organize everything and it works out good. 
right in front of my sink. I have a spice rack that I really love. It's all of my spices there, makes them look pretty. And below the spice rack, I have two drawers and a lie. The lie looks like a drawer, it's not a drawer, but it provides a great spot for cat food. Here is my Instant Pot air fryer. I still use the crock pot function quite a bit to make soups, so I wanted that um, for the Instant Pot, and then of course an air fryer. They have three burners here, and they work fantastic. I never had a problem with them. And behind, I have a knife rack. Above the stove is where the microwave used to live. This is one of the modifications I did. I don't use microwaves. I really just use them to melt butter. So now I melt butter on top of the stove. I took the microwave out. My uncle helps me make a little shelf in here. Gives it two layers. I can fit so much stuff in here now versus having a microwave I would use a couple times a month. I put this net up and hooks so nothing falls out while we travel. The top shelf has a little lip on it so nothing falls out. On the other side of the kitchen across from the door I have my fridge. This is not the fridge that came with the RV when I purchased it. This is a 12 volt fridge. I went ahead and I added a solar system to the roof and wanted a more efficient fridge to go with it. Your compressor fridges are absolutely can run um, while you're boondocking. They can run off propane. However, you get this big grate at the top shelf and you lose storage up there. And then if you were to put that fridge on electric to run off your batteries, it just isn't as efficient as a 12 volt. I got super lucky and scored this for about half the price at a uh, outlet warehouse um, in Southern Michigan. So I'm really thankful for it. It's a Dometic, it works fantastic, has a lot of storage. It's worked out great for me so far. A little bit further down the kitchen, I have my very large pantry that I converted into a closet and kind of regret it. This pantry had three shelves that are really easy to remove. I took the top one out, left it in Michigan, and wish I had it. I had all my coats, dresses, some sweaters hanging in this closet. After reorganizing my bedroom, I can fit it all back there. So I want to go ahead and put that top shelf back in and gain more storage that way. One of my favorite upgrades that I did was I found this sliding shelf on Facebook Marketplace and it fits so many things that I use for cooking right away. All my oils, my salt, my pepper, I've got a bowl, I've got a pot in here, and most important, my popcorn kettle that I could never, ever, ever, ever live without. Below the pantry, I have two drawers. One is a work in progress. The other one is all set. I love what's in it. The work in progress drawer right now just has two pans, a strainer, some napkins, my butter melter. Very important to go with the popcorn. And a little bag that I used to hang my fruits in that uh, fell off the wall because it got too heavy. So, still trying to figure out what this drawer wants to be. And this is my bathroom. I do amazingly have a teeny tiny little bathtub. You can kind of sit in it and scrunch up your knees. Because I don't shower every single day, I thought it was a great place for the litter box to live. Um, helps keep the litter contained. I use wood pellets, which side note, if you don't use wood pellets, you're doing cat litter wrong. I have a box of wood pellets inside. I've got a bin for the sawdust. When they pee on the wood pellets, it turns to sawdust. And then I also have my litter genie because stinky poos do happen in this house. I have a corner shower organizer that I have secured in place using putty on the bottom and a furniture strap on top. It's a tension rod. However, I took it on a single drive a few miles down the street and it fell out. So to make it more secure, I just added the two more things and it hasn't ever fallen or even shifted since. I tie up my shower curtain when it's not in use because one of my boys really likes scratching after he goes to the bathroom and ruins things anywhere in the vicinity. I have a lot of storage in, uh-oh, ah! 
in my medicine cabinet. I've got amazing shelves. I put clear containers up here so I can see what's in every container. But fit a lot in here. I have my necklaces, which have obviously got all tangled. And below, I found these organizers at Ikea. This is my daily use basket. This is my non-daily use basket. Up here, I have this plant. She has been with me for many, many years. She's got some promising buds inside, but she used to have all these branches that spilled over the edge. She was so pretty. She even survived the move from California to Michigan. However, it seems that her downfall is a kitten. On this side, I have some hooks for um, my hand towel, my body towel, and my hair towel. Um, I also have towels over here. These are really nice Turkish towels. They dry super fast. And then over here in the corner, I have another big upgrade that I did. I went ahead and put in a composting toilet. I got lucky again on Marketplace and found this toilet for a couple hundred dollars less than a brand new toilet. The guy said it was used one or two times. He cleaned it all out for me, so it wasn't weird. It is definitely an experience going to the bathroom in this. At first, I was like, what have I done? Now, I really love it. I love that there is no water to it. And I have obviously completed my uh, transformation into a cat because they poop in a box, I poop in a box. I've got to come down here to show you my absolute favorite modification. So in 2020, when everybody was freaking out over toilet paper, I opened up my cupboards and thought I was out of toilet paper. Flash forward, I was not out of toilet paper. So I went to Costco to panic buy like other people. I pull up to Costco and there was a line around the entire building and I was like, ha ha, no. So I started looking at what else I could do and that's when I ended up getting a bidet and I have never looked back. But then I wanted to do this so badly and how a bidet works with a normal toilet, it's just not possible even with an RV toilet. However, I saw a video of another guy doing a modification for a composting toilet and there's a water line right here. And most people who do a composting toilet just cap it off. But this guy, he put a bidet on the water line and I was like, <gasps> I could just still have a bidet. So <laughs> I have a bidet in my RV and I love it so much. If you don't have a bidet, you need a bidet. This one doesn't work the same as my other one. I did like the other one a little bit better, but this one still works amazingly. I love it. Keeps it clean down there, especially when you're boondocking and not showering for many days on end. This keeps you fresh and is lovely. And finally, welcome to my bedroom. This bed is a residential queen. A lot of RVs will say king, queen, full, but they are RV fulls, RV queens, RV kings. This is a residential queen. I mean, obviously it's just me, so there's a lot of space to spread out, except actually the bed does get crowded with the cats. They all seem to just snuggle right up to me, so it can get crowded in here. I have two hanging closets on both sides. I've got storage all the way over. I've got some organizers in the closets that help me um, fit a little bit more in each closet. And then around the bed, I have my favorite string lights that I bought for one of my apartments and hadn't been able to use since that apartment, but they fit here. They provide really nice ambient lighting. I'm really happy with them at night. I turn all the lights off, just have my string lights on and it just uh, so lovely and cozy. Above the bed, I have a Max Air Fan. Max Air Fans can be open and running in rain. It's got a nice cover on it. It provides really, really nice air circulation, especially at night. I have bedside tables, but there is no storage in the bedside tables. That is my pass-through underneath. I also have two drawers on each side of the bed that provide a lot of extra storage. On the other side of my pantry, this is a modification that my mom actually suggested. So shout out Barb. Um, I had this shoe organizer from Ikea um, in my old apartment that was teeny tiny with no counter space. 
Uh, it used to hang in the closet, but we put up some hooks. I cut like an extra couple holes and put a couple extra hooks in here in case it got too heavy. It's got four rows and I'm not even using all of them. I'm not a shoe addict, so really these are all the shoes that I have. I have like some vacuum accessories here. Got some camera accessories down there and it just is an amazing way to get things up off the floor and to utilize, utilize the space. This is also a recent modification. These are the jackets that used to live in the pantry, but I put them here and I like them here. It's working out good. There's not a whole ton to show around the outside of my camper. I've got an outdoor shower, which is really nice. Haven't used it yet, but plan to. But I did want to show you the pass-through storage. So it goes all the way through to the other side. This is where I mentioned it goes under my bed. I've got all my electrical and water things down here. I've got my filtration system right here. I've got my hoses. I've got all my electrical got some extensions. I got these nice bins off Marketplace so everything stays really organized in here. It's really nice. Got some bleach spray to spray down everything with dumping the gray and black tanks. As soon as I'm done, I'm just give it all a good spray with the bleach spray. And here's the other side. Again, not as organized, but this is like my, I keep my drill here because I'm mostly using this to bring up and down my stabilizer jacks. I've got a couple more bins here with my tablecloth. I've got cut up pool noodles because the spouts for the little gutters up there don't do a great job of actually throwing the water away from my RV. So this is the solution to get them away, get that water away from my RV. I've got my giant, lovely swing chair in here. I've got a table. I've got a giant pool noodle. I've got the top for my wood stove in here and then a whole box of tools and batteries and I've actually got a couple toolboxes in here. This one, this one, and a third one. I've got a power saw for cutting up that wood to fit into my tiny wood stove because the pieces need to be like this big to fit in that wood stove. So definitely gonna do some shopping. I want to introduce you to the babes. This is Mojo Jojo. She is my youngest. She's only seven months old, about to be eight months old right now. She's just a little black kitten. Um, I call her Jojo, but full name, Mojo Jojo. And this is Mr. Matthew. <laughs> Matthew is eight years old. And he's very cute. He is very naughty, but he's very cute. I like saying that he's not my good boy. He's my sweet boy. Don't fall for his face. He will betray you. Oh, hey, Jojo. <laughs> and this is Mr. Bear. Mr. Bear is 15 years old. He's been with me for so long and he actually is an angel. He's my sweetest boy. He can do no wrong and he's just a lover. We've lived in some pretty small spaces so something of this size wasn't too weird for them to get used to. I just had to make sure that I had their enrichment items. I had the cat tree, I had the fountain, I have toys. I have a tunnel and I just keep make sure to keep them stimulated and they do really well. And of course, keep that litter box clean. I'm planning to make more videos. I'm planning to make educational content, mostly because when I was doing research and trying to understand a lot of how the RV worked, um, all I was finding were videos of men or couples and I either would like to have it coming from a female voice or I would like to know how to do something by myself, such as leveling. I just wanna show women that this is something you can absolutely do. If you want more space than just a van like I wanted, this is something that's totally doable and you can do on your own. 
yes, it's a big piece of equipment, but I don't want you to be intimidated by it. I want to break it down and show you how you can do it, how you can do it alone, and I want to build your confidence so that if you don't have anybody to do this with, you shouldn't be waiting for somebody to do this with. You can do this now, you can do this all on your own. Thank you so much though for touring my home and meeting my cats. It's been lovely to have you and I can't wait to see you on the next video. Thank you.